I do think that the concepts in this lecture become more complicated as we roll. So this idea is tricky. Now, we're going to talk about two genes that are impacting fruit fly um, phenotypes. And I've drawn the fruit fly. No, I did not draw these. I stole the images of these fruit flies for you so that we can identify their, um, the different variants that we have um, possible to us. So linked genes are genes found on the same chromosome. Remember when we talked about Mendel? Oh boy, Mendel, we said, you should go buy a lottery ticket, Mr. Mendel, because you were very, very lucky. In all actuality, I bet Mendel actually doctored his data and left out data that didn't match his expected um, phenotypes or his expected ratios. I say that, um, I'm sure, I hope that doesn't make anybody mad that I say that because it's like shocking to me that the seven traits that he studied all happened to be fully dominant and recessive to alleles. And they each trait that he looked at was coded for by a gene on a separate chromosome. That just seems kind of wild. We're going to look at fruit fly wing shape and fruit fly color in order to talk about what, what we would expect to see if a gene is linked. How, how is that going to change the expected um, ratios that we would see with Mendel's giddy up? Um, if anybody wants to come over to my house, I currently have a very large fruit fly outbreak that I'm not exactly sure what to do with them. I definitely haven't like tried to identify if they are gray bodies. I think they all have normal wings because they're all flying around like mad. My son's cat, Victor, came over and Victor enjoyed the fruit fly um, infestation because he liked to chase and I guess eat the fruit flies. So maybe Victor has to come back over and help me with my fruit fly infestation. In the meantime, let's talk fruit fly phenotypes. You'll notice that we have two body phenotypes here. We have gray, and we have black. And I don't know if you can see this very well. I'm gonna zoom in just so you can see. We have uh, normal wings. Do you see those wings? These guys both have normal wings and normal is what they're called. And then compare it to this. They call this a vestigial wing. Vestigial, normal. Okay, and look, here's another vestigial wing. You kind of have to look close in order to see the wing phenotype, but um, I'll just go ahead and put this normal, normal, vestigial, vestigial, and then this was black. Oops, that's not black, silly. What if I got that one wrong on the test? I would be very mad at myself. That's gray. This one's black. Do you agree that we just identified the phenotypes of the fruit flies? Easy. Phenotypes are descriptions of things we can see, things we can touch, proteins that we can find. Awesome. The next question is, what are the genotypes that lead to this? And in order to figure out what genotypes are possible with each of these um, traits, we need to take a second to identify the pot, like what are, like let's name our gene and um, let's figure out who's recessive and who's um, dominant. So we have um, body color, 
and we have gray. And I'll just go ahead and tell you gray is dominant or black. Black is recessive. And we have wing shape. And I'll tell you right now, normal is dominant and vestigial is recessive. Vestigial wings are not going to be super successful in the world. So vestigial wings are something that scientists have propagated and um, so that they can study genetics. Oh, thank you, Free Flies. If, now, we're going to do two things at the same time. We're going to try to imagine, like, we're going to look at all the genotypes. We're going to think about the possible gametes. All of this is normal even though in reality these genes are linked. Once we identify all the genotypes and the possible gametes that we have for these guys, then we're gonna look, we're gonna do some crosses. We're gonna make fruit fly babies. Oh, I'm already starting projects in my kitchen. We're gonna make fruit fly babies and see what they look like. We're gonna look at our expected phenotypes, like how and percentages. And then I'm going to tell you what we actually see. So keep in your brain, stay focused with me here, because this is a multi-step process. First, we need to see what would happen if these two, what do we expect? If these two genes are found on separate chromosomes and they do the Mendelian thing, we've got complete dominance in both situations, what are we going to expect to see? Well, First of all, um, our possible genotypes, do you agree that, you know, let's, um, I'm gonna use the same letters, gray. Ugh, what, I don't like this. I'm gonna use blue and I'm gonna go, my possible genotype is, I know I have one big G, but I actually don't know if I have another big G or I could, it could be heterozygous and it would still express the gray phenotype. Um, I'm gonna do body types all the way down. Black is recessive, and so I'm just gonna do little g, little g. And I picked g randomly. So you can pick any letter to represent this, just be consistent all the way through. I have um, column three, we've got another gray guy. Again, we're not positive what that one is. And then we have another black guy. Then we do our wing shape. We have our normal wing shape, dominant. I think I did N for normal. And again, we don't know. Um, and normal, we don't know. Vestigial is gonna have to be homozygous recessive in both those cases. You just identified the genotype <clears throat> of each one of these flies. So far, so good. So far, this makes sense. Now, possible gametes. Our possible gametes in every situation where we see a little line, we can't determine. We, we don't know, because if those are heterozygous, <clears throat> where that little line is, if it's recessive, it's gonna give us different options than if it's dominant. The only um, possible gamete that we know for sure is this guy. All of that guy's gametes are going to have a little n and a little g because those are the only options. Do you agree that our gray normal winged home kid could be, oops, not that color. This is the problem with lots of colors. Could be that. That could be a gamete. Sure. Could be that. That's a possible gamete for that guy if he's heterozygous could be this, sure, could be this. Do you agree that there are four possible gametes? Now, let's take a look at this guy. Every gamete for this guy has little g. But they could have little n, little g. But there's only two possible gametes for that guy. Similar situation for this one. All of them have little n. I'm just going to put both little n's there. Could have big G, could have little g. 
These are, I did it all. I did all my possible gametes for both situations. Are you cool with that? This is what we would expect. And then if we had heterozygous genotypes for all these guys, then we would expect a quarter for this friendly fella. We'd expect a quarter of the gametes to be big N, big G, a quarter of the gametes to be big N, little G, quarter of the gametes to be little N, big G, and a quarter of the gametes to be little N, little G, right? Yes. Well, let's do a cross. I'm going to tell you, we're going to cross, we're going to define, um, okay, I can do this. I'm struggling to pick a color. We're going to cross a heterozygous normal gray guy. So it is big N, little n, big G, little g, times a homozygous recessive black vestigial guy. Little n, little n, little g, little g. How do you feel about this? This is the cross that we're going to do. And I'm going to do it on another page. What? So I'm going to show you what we're going to do. The possible um, gametes for this home kid, these are the possible gametes for that guy. And these are the possible gametes for this guy. I kind of want to grab these gametes. In fact, Watch the magic. I'm gonna take this to the next page with us. Copy, I copied that. I'm taking it to the next page so that we can remember what we just figured out. We figured out that these are my possible gametes. That this is my genotype. Oh no, this is this guy, huh? And this is my genotype. Oh my Lord. That was the worst idea I've ever had. I'm going to stop this right now. I'm not stopping it. I'm just going to delete all this stuff. Cut. Goodbye. Let me start over. Because <laughs> we got this. We can figure this out as we go. Ready? I guarantee that wasn't the worst idea I've ever had. We have our N gene and our G gene. This guy Phenotype, black vestigial wings. Genotype is little n, little n, little g, little g. That's easy. We've got that one. I told you that this guy is heterozygous. So we have big N, little n, big G, little g. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to make a square. Now, our square, I am going to do some magic here because our square is going to let us throw in our possible gametes. We've already figured out our possible gametes, but we're going to do it again. All our gametes have to have a copy of the N gene and a copy of the G gene. So let's do this. This is the hard one. So we could have that gamete. We could have this gamete. We could have this gamete or we could have this gamete. Those are all possible gametes produced by that fly. Our black fly is only going to make one gamete. We're good, yeah? Okay, now what are our possible babies that you would expect to see? We have big N, little n, big G, little g. What kind of fly is that? That's going to be like the parent fly, a normal gray fly, normal wing gray fly. This guy is also a normal winged, but not a gray fly, a normal wing black fly. This guy, vestigial winged gray guy, vestigial winged black guy. Look, and okay, what percentages do you expect? This is where it gets weird. Oh my gosh, we did this whole thing and it's not how it is. This is where it gets weird. Our expected percentages, you expect 
25% of everything. So we're going to expect 25% of each one of these guys if the genes are found on separate chromosomes. Now, before we go one step further, I need you to look at those babies and I need you to tell me which babies are a word that we haven't talked about yet. Which babies are recombinant? Recombinant babies have phenotypes that are not like the parents. Phenotypes are not like the parents. Okay, you're still with me. I can tell you're still with me. So who are the recombinant babies? Well, to figure out who our recombinant babies are, we have to go look at our phenotypes. So baby number one is phenotype like gray normal parent. Baby number four is phenotype like black vestigial parent. So who are my recombinant babies? The normal winged black fly baby and the vestigial winged gray fly baby. Those are my recombinant. They don't look like the parent. Great questions would be, here are the parent flies. Here's a heterozygous, here's a homozygous recessive fly. Which possible offspring? Which genotypes are recombinant? They're the ones that are expressing phenotypes that are not like the parent, okay? Here's how you know that the situation is funkified. If you have a linked gene, okay? So if these two traits are on the same chromosome, they're not on separate chromosomes like all of Mendel's peas. They're on the same chromosome. And I don't know, have we even looked at anything like that before? If they're linked, we have the N gene and the G gene on the same chromosome. They can be really close together, they can be not so close together. If they're linked, you're going to have big numbers, oops, big percentages of parental phenotypes and small percentages of recombinant phenotypes. For example, 40% of your babies, instead of 25%, 40% of your babies show up with normal wings and gray bodies. <coughs> and 40% show up with vestigial wings and black bodies. And what's that leave? 10% show these recombinant phenotypes. That's your clue that there that the chromosomes were linked. The genes were linked on the same chromosome. You could have to evaluate data to determine, is this a linked trait and how do you know? Um, that's it. Okay. You wouldn't have linked traits if you're just dealing with one gene. You have to have two genes and they have to have complete dominance. And then if you have that situation, then you can do crosses to determine, are these traits linked? And if you end up with recombinant babies in smaller percentages, then they are linked. Super curious to see how you held up with that one. That's the hardest one. The next two are, well, maybe the next one is not super straightforward. Um, okay, we'll get there. You can do this. Keep going.